All right, in today's video, guys, I'm gonna be showing you how to install a Nishimoto radiator on your IS300. Uh, it's a really easy job. You can do it at home, save yourself some money. Uh, enough talking. I'm gonna open up the box and I'm gonna show you what you need to get this project done. It'll take you about an hour to do, but let's get started. All right, so I got the radiator all unboxed. Super fresh, it looks super nice. So no more fucking stupid plastic shit. And like I was saying, for the automatics, for the back side right here, let's flip it real quick. So the back side is bit. I believe these are blocked off now. Uh, the automatic ones, the automatic transmission ones, these are for the... Uh... All right, my dumbass can't talk, but what I was trying to say is the automatic transmission radiator that they sell has two more like little nipple things sticking out of the other side so your transmission uh cooler lines can fit in it those are not for the tr automatic transmission those are for the radiator fan i found out at the end so that's what i was trying to say i'm a little special i don't function like normal kids but anyways let's get back to the video do you need a uh, red uh coolant make sure it's red make sure make sure it's red because some people be running green in this um my old is my second one by the way I did run green coolant in it. I didn't realize it's not a big deal, but obviously they do recommend red coolant, so make sure to get red. Uh, even, you know, it says right here, Toyota Lexus. So, ain't that hard, guys. So make sure you put right coolant in your, in your car and everything will be good. So let's get started with the removing problem. All right, guys, so uh, I got the car jacked up. So first step is gonna be, obviously, drain your uh, coolant. You'll see like a little, uh, well, I don't know what's it called. Drain, drain valve right here. So all you want to do, make sure you have a drip pan right here. Start turning it. There you go. Once, and then it'll come out right there. Hold on. Just gonna spill the ground. All right, bet. There you go. So, oh shit. Oh yeah, it's gonna messy shit, but. But while that's draining, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna start working the top right here. Uh, I'm gonna take off the uh, little intake scoop right here and start taking off the hoses and yeah, just get the fans and everything. So let's do that. So this is gonna be a 10 mil right here. Get the bottom hose off and then I'm back because I need two hands for this. But once the bottom hose is off, make sure I have a drip pan just in case it's gonna start dripping. And then after that, we should be pretty much ready to take off the radiator out the car and then transfer the fans over and stuff like that. And then you should just take these off and it should be the last step. Should put these aside. Don't lose this. Just put it right here. Uh, one more thing I totally forgot the uh, coolant temp sensor. Make sure to unplug that. <clears throat> All right, good. Once that's unplugged, whole thing's gonna come right out. Ooh. After you get off six bolts, literally just place it on the new one. Just like that. Perfect fit. Look at that. So we're gonna put back in these six 10 mils right here. And then we should be ready to go. All right, so once you got everything tightened up, there's six bolts all around. Once you got that tightened up, and then once you also get your coolant temp sensor all in, by the way, that's a 19 mil. And you got all your, uh, I believe it's an overflow, overflow uh, hose that goes in the tank. Um, once that's all connected in, uh, now we're ready to put the radiator in the car. And after that, plug everything back in, all the hoses, and we're ready to bleed, bleed the car. And this should just drop right straight in. So, and make sure the uh, bottom little pegs are sit sitting on the uh, on the little mounts. 
t-shirts going down soon. Okay, once the once the radiator is sitting in the spot, you'll feel it. It's, it's gonna be sitting in the little spot. It's like little pegs. Make sure it goes in the little grommets. It's like little holes. So yeah. So radiator's in. What I'm gonna do now is connect everything and then um, pretty much a reverse process. And I'll be back when that's done. And I'll resume the video when we're bleeding the car. Make sure there's no leaks while you're doing this. Oh shit. Make sure you don't pour too fast. So once this stops taking all this coolant, then we'll start the car up and I'll show you what to do next. So it's not gonna be uh, burping no more. Now we gotta start up the car. And we gotta put on the, uh, the heat. Oh shit, on number two. Okay. Shit, all right, bet. Alright, so make sure your heat is on, I believe it's number two or three. I'm not, I forgot, but I don't think it matters. Just, just gotta uh, turn off your AC, of course, and then we just gotta make sure the thermostat opens up. That's what we're waiting for, and as you can see, it's already bubbling up. We're not bubbling up. It's doing its thing. We are looking for the fan to turn on. Once the fans are on, I believe it's bleeded, fully bleeded, but also we gotta, we can check the, like, the whole attached way thermostat post we can put our hand on it if it's warm that means thermostat's opened up and it's flowing if it's still kind of cold that means it hasn't opened up yet so right now all we gotta do is wait and once we're waiting while we're waiting just check for leaks and everything all right guys i didn't get my camera but the fan did turn on so that means the system is fully around the motor another way like i said you can put your hand uh on that cool the road it's right there that cool was right there i did touch it it is warm be careful the headers don't burn your hands. So other than that guys, like I said, this one, it's gonna put in the, uh, the, the Oracle tank in here, the rest of it.